What is up, all my sexy little markers? How's everybody doing? Uh, by the way, excuse my haircut. I haven't got one yet, and I need one. But point of this video, guys, not my. It's not about my haircut. It's about the ultimate retargeting system, the ultimate retargeting ad. How do we do this? A lot of the people they run an ad and they don't. They miss this one crucial step that I'm actually going to break down here, and it's actually not that difficult. But by doing this, it's going to it's going to 10x your ROAS. And you return on ad spend. So let's say, for example, that you are running an ad to a cold audience and you get them to go to a form. Usually, if you're running an ad to a cold audience, right? Get them to fill out that form like 10 bucks. But what I'm what I'm about to teach you right now is that you can get those guys back retargeted, get them back to click that that ad, and eventually either fill out a form or schedule an appointment with you for at least like a dollar. But you have to do it in the right way. And this video, we're gonna talk about that. So let me show you ultimately like what you need to do and what a lot of people are actually just, just missing. So I know guys, I'm gonna bring up my handy dandy little drawing tablet over here that you guys all love. He's my amazing, beautiful handwriting. How does this work, Lane? So you are, actually, where's cool? So you are, you have an ad over here, you go to like an opt in. All right, but they don't schedule an appointment. Entire point, let's say, let's say we're say doing high ticket over here. And typically, typically what I see when you're running ads for it really to be worth it, you gotta be selling high ticket, okay? And I mean, you can have something up front to kind of bring them in, but high ticket is usually the best. And the best way to sell high ticket is typically, it typically is with a sales call, okay? So what I'm trying to say is anything $300 and above, you need a sales call really. It's a lot harder not to, not, it's a lot harder to sell a high ticket without a sales call. I mean, I just haven't found a way to be, for it to become successful. But let's talk about this retargeting ad. What a lot of people mess up, or kind of screw up, is that they don't, is not finding out why they don't opt in. And this why, we're going to explain it right here, is really all you need. Right, I'm thinking about like texting there. <laughs> why? This why is really all you might need. Maybe you just need another simple retargeting ad just to get them to get in there. But a lot of people also miss this out. So what you need to do and what we have done, I have my notes over here. Uh, but what, what I've done in the past to really just figure this out is you can't just run one retargeting ad because there's multiple different reasons why this person might ha have not purchased your product or service. That's solution. You know, you could have the ultimate solution, the ultimate product, the ultimate service. But if this guy doesn't understand why that would work for him, why is that person going to buy it? You know, people buy off of emotions. What I'm trying to say that people buy off emotions is that if they buy what they want, not what they actually need. So what you need to do is have them, let them further understand why they need to purchase that product and why they need to do that like today, right? Because they're missing out on something. So what I'm trying to say is, for example, Funnel Hacker Lab, right? You know, we have a lot of things on here. We have 300 landing page templates. Actually, it's like 400 now. We just actually added a bunch more. 400 different landing page templates for Go High Level and ClickFunnels. We also have a Funnel Planner tool. So Planner. All right, we also have a heat map. And we have ad-specific tra tracking. Now, honestly, this, this heat map and this ad tracking is the most helpful here. And, I, and without it, I don't know how you can really do this. Uh, but we're gonna get into that in a second. Because overall, you still can do this, all right? And the reason why I'm not charging people for this, for what I'm about to explain to you, is because my goal is to make you guys the most successful as possible. And if when I'm making you guys successful, when I'm giving you guys profitable funnels, that's why I don't hold back my videos. By me providing you with profitable funnels and really telling you what works and what doesn't work, it's just ultimately going to make me more money because once you have a profitable funnel and you can get then get to Funnel Hacker Labs to make it even more profitable, decrease costs, increase revenue. So, but let's get back to this. A little shameless plug right there. I mean, you can do this overall, even if you don't have the ad tracking. Because ultimately, this is the way you should run your retargeting ads. 
is to hit those Ys. So for example, maybe one of those Ys is just something like this. Maybe they don't, maybe they have questions, maybe something. So typically what you have is like over your opt-in, maybe you have like a sales video, okay? But realistically, I won't even watch a full blown 15, 30 minute sales video. What I'm trying to say is not a lot of people will, are willing to watch a 15, 30 minute sales video. So what I'm trying to say is after, after having that, sometimes, I mean, sometimes people are, sometimes, sometimes you might retarget somebody, someone's just straight back to the sales video because they didn't watch it the first time. And that's all it's going to take. But a lot of times it's not necessarily that point. So what you can also do is let's say they didn't watch a sales video. Okay. But you won't be able to know because you don't really have this. But what I'm trying to say is uh, what you can also do is you can just retarget them with an ad and specifically send them to a sales recap, which pretty much just gives, breaks down that 30 minute video into a two to five minute video that they can answer other questions and has text below it. And it has a bunch of proof under beneath it, beneath it as well. Okay, so it's just a quick sales recap instead. I mean, really quick, you know? Maybe somebody didn't, maybe after watching that sales video, or maybe after hopping on a phone call with somebody and they didn't buy, maybe they didn't buy because th their question wasn't answered in the sales video or in the call. So a lot of times what you can do is run a simple retarding ad to something like a FAQ page, All right? So an FAQ page, where it just has a, a series of common questions that was asked previously in video and in text format, for people to just go through and just kind of close themselves, you know, sell themselves. That's another very good one. Another thing could be like is maybe they don't see the return on investment, all right? Maybe they don't see the return on investment. So what you can do is you can send another ad to that person, okay? And then now this is this is where really creating custom audiences really come in effect because under because you got to understand where these people are coming from. And being able to probably track them allows you to understand what ads they've seen, what ads are successful, and what pages, what pages they actually read, where in, where in the page they got the heat map is driving the most friction, other things like that. What I'm trying to say is this, this return on investment. Maybe the people aren't seeing the return on investment, so we can do some an ad specifically into this return on investment page where you have a video over there that shows a, a bunch of your different customers and it shows all their success stories, testimonies, and other things like that. And it shows the actual numbers behind it of utilizing a heat map, utilizing a planner tool, utilizing ad track, utilizing the 400 different landing page templates just based upon your private, your previous client's experience, you know? So you can have another one is just wrote the return on investment page. Another one could be, maybe they don't understand your brand. Now this one, is not always the best one, but I still have gotten people to actually convert just by the brand page. The entire point is brand page is for them to understand your overall image. So for me, my overall image for Funnel Hacker Lab is that we do everything for you. So a couple, so literally yesterday, uh, one of our one of our members in Funnel Hacker Lab, they need a specific landing page built, and they need it like yesterday. So I quickly did. I caught. I was like, "All right, what do you? What specifically do you need on this? In on this funnel? What specifically you need on this page? And what is it for?" So then, I need it for. Uh, I need it for go high level. I need a lead gen campaign for a local lo business that is a lawyer. And I was like, "I just closed this guy, the first the first customer. And I need this funnel like ASAP so I get this guy started and actually start running ads for his lawyer." So what I did is I called up my designers. Like, listen, let's make three different landing page templates for this guy to really make him happy. So what I'm trying to say is my entire brand is based upon making my customers happy. And by being able to, uh, by being able to verbalize, I don't know the right word to say here, but by being able to put that onto a page, describe that through video format and through writing, people are able to see Funnel Hacker Labs primary motive, which is just making, doing as much as we can, going out over and above to make, other people successful because the more successful we make our customers, the more successful we'll become. So by being able to dictate that onto a page also helps a lot. It's just another page that you can hit them with different angles. We're pretty much the entire point of retargeting, you know? Another one could be so a sales video, point to the sales video, the brand, ROI. Another one can be an FAQ page. Oh, another cool one over here. Another one can be like a demo page. 
All right, another one could be like a demo page. So what we've done in the past too is we've had, and I'm gonna talk about other retargeting ads or retargeting types in a second, All right? Yeah, so the other one, it can be a good demo. So what you can do is you will offer these people like a $1 trial, trial, just so that they can try this out for like a week, okay? And realistically, it's only a dollar, you know? It's only a dollar, so they don't really have an excuse not to do that. And but a lot of times a demo gets people in, they try it out for a week, they say, wow, I actually really like this. The communication between the me and the, the everyone else is amazing. You know, Blades are always putting up value on the group. Blades always doing this. I mean, they're always trying to look at, they're always just trying to help me out. And by being able to do that, by showing them my hospitality, that gets people in. Another one, and a really cool one that actually sells himself is training. And I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm going to talk about a different campaign in a quick second. So make sure you stick around to this other campaign I'm going to talk about in a second because you think you guys don't like this. All right. What I'm trying to say is the training. Now, the, the, the beauty behind a training is that, like I said, it sells themselves. So the entire point of this training is, what can you do? I'm terrible at handwriting. What can you do with, with Funnel Hacker Lab? So you, maybe you're going to have a page over here with a video. Ooh. <laughs> we got a video right there. All right. And maybe a section over here with multiple different videos and different ways you can use Funnel Hacker Labs, uh, the templates. You can uh, you can uh, become an agency. How to use it as an agency? How to use e-commerce? How to use this to uh, decrease costs, increase revenue? And after you press all of these, it pops up another video. Excuse my text over there. I don't know if you got that notification there, but it just has a bunch of different things for you can uh, a bunch of different uses that you can select and watch the videos on how to to use this with your own business, you know? And that close, pretty much close themselves. And you can have, obviously have the testimonials down by here, the success stories, and all those other things. The entire point of this training is that you're able to show them all these different things that you can do with Funnel Hacker Labs. And like I said, it closes themselves. I, I like that one, it's not Funnel Hacker one. But what I'm trying to say, the, the great thing about retargeting ads, the beauty behind this, specifically retargeting ads, and I, I might make the other video going over organic method, organic retargeting videos, or organic retargeting methods in another video. But be the entire point of retargeting ad, retargeting ads is to test a whole bunch of SHIT. In general, <laughs> in general, the entire point of ads is so you can split test and split test and split test. The entire point of the retargeting ad. The reason why you get these people to come in a lot cheaper and actually convert a lot cheaper is for two things: is because they already saw your brand, and because you're able to shoot them over a lot of information and that they can close themselves, right? Because they they trust themselves before they trust you. So if you're able to really figure out the why, the reason why they didn't buy, then what you're able to do with that is you can just once you figure out why, hit them with a bunch of different pages see what really hits, okay? See what really works and then just do more of that. <laughs> the entire point of retarding ads is to hit them with multiple different ads and multiple different sales pages to ultimately just be, everyone's different because you know, this one might convert 10, like this one over here might convert nine out of 10. This one might convert one out of 10. This one might convert two out of 10. This one might convert zero out of, no, I want to, eventually will, 0.5 out of 10. This might convert six out of 10, all right? Seven, 10, two out of 10. What I'm trying to say is that, yeah, I mean, this one might be very, very low, but it's still converting people. And the fact that you're able to get people onto this page are very, very cheap because of the retargeting ads, because I already saw your business before, it's still worth having these things up. Absolutely, no doubt. Still completely worth it. So what I'm trying to say is the, the retargeting ad is, a way to really handle the rejections, figure out their why, handle those rejections, and an easy way to convert customers. Most of my conversions with my software and my other businesses that I've ran, when I ran ads to them, most of those conversions actually come from some sort of retargeting, whether it be ads, emails, tax messages, a follow-up call, something like that. You know, those are usually typically when I get the cheapest 
and most highest converting people, you know, because maybe they, they hit the ad, they schedule a call, and maybe they don't, that doesn't close them. They go to the Facebook group, they see my, my videos, my content, then they see my YouTube video and the YouTube pixel, whatever it is, picks them up, send them another ad out there, goes to like an FAQ page and the FAQ page, uh, maybe that doesn't sell them, but if they leave for a couple of days, they see a Facebook ad, that Facebook retargeting ad, gets some, brings them over to the demo or the training. And on the training, they, they convert there. I've had people that, I mean, what I'm trying to say, ads also are a long-term play, you know? You can't come into like retarding ads thinking that instantly I'm gonna get sales. Because a lot of times what happens is you can have people, you know, maybe they're just not ready for your product or service yet, you know? So it's always worth, well, selling high ticket, but it's always worth just thinking of the fact that maybe the person isn't ready to convert today. So what you got to do is you got to make sure your ads are consistent. Make sure you're putting up all of these multiple different objections, the common ones that you find. And you can always find the objections just by asking people and what type of pages by asking people. But what I'm trying to say is that it's, it's important to be able to have these and be able to track the people that are going through these funnels to really figure out what works and to figure out what, what their why is. And ultimately, Ultimately, like I said, this is a long-term play. So what I've had in the past is I had somebody see our ad, right? Maybe they go MIA because maybe they go on vacation for like a month or two. And they come back to the business and they're like, oh, they see another ad. They're like, oh, I'm not hack a lab. Maybe I'm going to buy now. Or maybe they don't. They see the page. They're like, eh, I don't know about this. But then they are continuing to do their thing. Maybe two months later, they see one of my one of my videos, okay? Maybe they see an ad of me again. Maybe they see a YouTube video of me again because they search for something specific. Or maybe they see a, a keyword specific Google ad, you know, keyword search term ad, retarding ad. And they're like, oh, we haven't clicked this. Oh, Funnel Hacker Lab again. You know what? I've been watching this guy for a while. I've been in his Facebook group for a while. I've been watching his YouTube videos. He kind of knows what he's talking about. He's a cool guy. I've actually had a couple of conversations with Blade. You know what? Maybe it's been three months now. Maybe it's now it's the time for me to actually utilize this stuff. But previously, if you don't run these retargeting ads, you wouldn't have been able to do that because you wouldn't have seen any of those retargeting ads. You know, what's great about this, I mean, like I said, it's a long-term play, but what's great about these retargeting ads is this is not only for Facebook, you know, people are not always on Facebook. The great things about retargeting ads is that you can put it on native ads. You can have Facebook ads. You can have YouTube ads, everything. Google, Google keywords ads, you know? Because people are always looking for information on Google search, search, YouTube. People are always on Facebook groups. People are always on Instagram. People are always searching through blogs and articles and stuff, and native ads, you know? So what I'm trying to say is ultimately then you can't go into running ads thinking that you're gonna run one ad, one ad and it's gonna be extremely profitable. It's making a billion, gajillion dollars. It's not how it works, all right? What I'm trying to say is running ads is also like a full-time job and everything needs to be tested. Everything needs to be tested, 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 tested. Okay. That's why, which is why I always preach about and that's, which is why I always preach that if you are getting an ad manager to just handle that job for you, make sure he's confident enough to tell you that you're doing something wrong. Because if you're running ads, I mean, anybody can run, watch a YouTube video and run an ad. Simple, very simple. But if, they don't, if the ad manager doesn't come to you, like, listen, Blade, I've been checking out the heat map. I've been checking out some of the, the, the statistics behind it. And you're getting a lot of friction on this video. Or they're saying, oh, this headline is not converting well. You don't know if you're comfortable and confident enough to tell you that this is not working, that something on your page is not working, and you need to change, don't hire them, okay? Which is also where it comes into the cost of entry too, because if you hire an ad manager, you might find a cheap one that's not at that running ad, but not, not confident enough to tell you what you're doing wrong. We also might have another one that's really expensive that feels confident enough because he knows what he's talking about and it feels right to tell you that you're doing something wrong or your funnel is set up wrong, whatever. So I'm trying to say is, yeah, there is a cost of entry doing ads, which is why I always tell people that ads aren't really meant for businesses that are just starting out. Organically, you should be getting to like five, 10K a month. Then you should be able to have that cash flow to be able to reinvest into ads. And like I said, ads are going to work just like, just like that. Yeah, like you said, ads in general are just a long-term play that are, that are going to tremendously scale your business. So guys, I don't want to make this video too long. I'm speaking really fast because I have some Celsius, guys. Right? Celsius, sponsor this video. Come on. <laughs> All right. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, guys, you always know you can leave that down in the comment section below or schedule a call with me. I would be more than happy to help. Guys, I want to make another video right after this. I'm going to talk about some more organic methods that you can utilize to retarget. 
It's not over. I have this concept, but just free methods that you can use to retarget. Uh, so watch out for that video. And I like to thank everybody for all that love and support. And make sure you hit that subscribe button, you know, turn on the notification bell so that you can know, so that you can help out the algorithm too. All right. I mean, honestly, I don't want to ask you for your sub because if you really found my stuff valuable, you would sub anyway. So X that. All right. Thank you guys. Peace out. And I see you up there. Wait, you're always pointing up there. That's the top. That's why. I'm always pointing at the top. I'll see you at the top. Peace out, everybody.